What's going on YouTube? This is Wayne with Wayne's Fish Roll and today we are building a racking system for my 75 gallon aquarium that I got on Craigslist for 50 bucks. If you haven't seen those videos, you gotta check out these videos right there on screen. Keep up to date, backtrack it, all my videos open up on a separate screen so you can hit the pause button, come back and check this one out. So, I'm building a racking system. Racking systems, the limit to them is your imagination. There's many different ways to construct a racking system. There's many different styles, such, such as stick build, dado build. Uh, like I said, the imagination is a limit. But what I'm going to be doing is making a multiple tier racking system to hold multiple layers of aquariums. Now, since I'm using a 75 gallon aquarium, this is a four foot span. If it was a larger span, I would have to brace it more or use bigger boards. I'm using two by sixes by 12s and two by six by eights. The reason I've got different lengths and lumber is because I'll save wood on certain parts by getting longer pieces. I won't have to buy extra, so it saves me a little bit of money. But the common tools that I've got, I've got my miter saw, which I love. I've got my hammer drill, because I'm not playing any games this time. Um, now, I usually use nails in my all my builds, because I'm just a guy of nails. So I, don't, I don't know. But um, what I'm using here are uh, number 10 three inch screws these are exterior wood screws they're not going to rust or anything like i said guys there's many ways to do it you can bolt these things down i guarantee you i guarantee you some troll in the comments will say it's going to fall apart because you didn't bolt it look i've got 125 gallon made out of two by fours and four by fours nothing bolts no screws it's just nails so when we're constructing a stand there's multiple parts there's the rack that there's the layers that actually hold the platform and then there is the legs and then there is the bracing now i'm going to show you step by step the rest of the video is going to be uh audio over the video we're going to go step by step on me building this racking system it's roughly going to be uh i don't know maybe 52 inches by 72 by 18 or 20. i'll come back at you guys in a few well, besides the fact that when I was recording this on my microphone that the audio was off by accident, uh, this video is going pretty well so far. <laughs> well, guys, let's dive back into it. I'm going to give it another try. When I was first constructing this stand, I went through a lot of different blueprints. I designed a couple different stands with bolts, with nails, with screws, a mixture of them. There was a lot of good ideas that I came on mind. And that's one thing you need to realize with anything in this aquarium hobby or pet keeping. You need to have a plan. You need to plan everything out or you're going to run into a wall and you're going to hit it like a freight train running into the Great Wall of China. It's not going to be pretty. You need to take a step by step, have a game plan. So after I came with a couple, um, a couple of options to go with, I decided to choose something that I didn't think I was going to go with. I was actually leaning towards an aquarium that was constructed using galvanized bolts. Now, the reason I wanted to choose galvanized bolts was not because of the structural integrity it could offer. It was because the accessibility that it was there. When I need to move this 75 gallon aquarium, all I have to do is drain it, take it apart, and then take a ratchet set and go at the bolts. Easy as that. Then when I want to set it back up again, I could go ahead and just set it up the same exact way, put the bolts back together, and call it a day. I even thought about it taking a router and stamping or carving numbers in that way I would know exactly what pieces go where so all in all you guys can see I chose to use screws I'm using my hammer drill for this I wasn't using the right bit size I couldn't find the right bit size and I didn't feel like going to buy one it's me being absolutely lazy and I don't suggest you guys to do that if you're using uh, screws to construct your stand that's perfectly fine but get the right tools for the job guys impact drivers will work wonders uh, get the right right size drill bit for your drill but Another reason I choose, chose screws was not for the accessibility that, I'm sorry, the reason I chose screws was not because they were stronger. I chose screws because I could take it apart. I didn't want the bolts bulging out. I knew one day I might want to finish this stand. I might want to put black trim around it and put some molding around it. I didn't want to have those bolts sticking out so I chose screws. I can still take screws apart and then insert them once more but 
Unlike bolts, they are concealed behind the wood and they mount flush. That way when I wanted to mount paneling to the sides, I wouldn't run into a big, huge roadblock. So right now you guys can see that I'm putting the risers on the aquarium. This tank stand is overall 72 inches tall. Um, I double plate the bottom, which you guys can see now, not because it's more structurally sound that way. The reason I did it that way is because it's getting that 75 off the floor a little higher. This stand was intentionally first uh, being designed to hold three 75 gallons high. It's a digivolution <laughs> or a evolution of my 55 gallon stand. I took concepts from that and I evolved it upon it. Um, right now I'm leveling my aquarium and this doesn't sound you know super special or anything but you definitely need to level your aquarium. It might look level to the eye but when you go to fill it with water you can see that you have a water level going to one side and sometimes I've seen people build stands half ass and then they go to try to fill the aquarium up and it's only filled on one side and you can see that tapering to the other corner of your aquarium. That's not a good thing. You don't want that. Take the time, buy a level, get the patience because you're going to need to learn and patience in this uh, aquarium hobby or pet keeping, however you want to uh, label it as. You need to learn patience eventually. So you might as well pick it up in the beginning. That way you can roll head on strong. Um, when I was building this stand, I chose to go 16 on center. I didn't go 24 on center. Now, the reason I would chose 16 on center is because, one, it's structurally, it's more structurally sound that way. 16 center, <clears throat> all that simply means is how far your sticks are spaced upon each other on a wall. So if you have a 16 center house, it's 16 inches apart. If it's a 24 center house, the boards are 24 inches apart. Now that I'm almost done the leveling, the next thing I'm going to dive into is, uh, well I can't remember so I'm just going to make some bullshit up while I'm watching the video on the screen because I'm too lazy to edit it. But I'm putting the last riser in right now and you guys will see later on in the video that I actually made a huge crucial mistake. But right now, what I'm putting in are, I don't know what you would call them, bracers. Let's call them bracers. I don't know. There might be a technical term for these. But even though I put a massive amount of screws into the stand, this right here is a crucial piece. You don't want your screws, your nails, or your bolts to take the sole weight of your aquarium. Yes, they can handle it if you use the right gauges. And what gauges are is basically thickness of the screw, nail, or bolt. Um, a 10 gauge nail is going to be a lot thicker than a 6 gauge nail. So I did something very impatient, guys. You need to have patience with this aquarium. I'm using drywall screws that are an inch and a half. That is the exact length. Well, you guys oh, two by four. notice one thing different. If you know, well, you, you wonder what that rumbling sound is, it is a combine. I live in Virginia in the country. But you might notice one thing slightly different with this stand that's not finished. I was rushing and I was talking, mainly rushing, and I put that board inside of here. I mean, this board, this piece right here was where this board's at. And that, what that did, <laughs> Oh shit. It made it three inches too wide and three inches too short, meaning a 75 gallon would not fit in there at all and it wouldn't work. So I said that for a second and thought about it and I said it's salvageable, we can fix this. So yesterday I came home from work and I, I unscrewed the whole damn thing with I don't know how many screws I put in there, but it's good, it's all good. And last night, the last thing I did was to two bracings, 16 on center. What I'm going to do later today is I'm going to put one more bracing here and one more bracing here. The same thing for the bottom and then make a, a, uh, a cap on it to finish it off to make the whole thing flush. So I actually had a camera person in this video and this person also helped me paint it. It is my woman and I owe her a great thank you because I hate painting. I don't have the patience for it. But you guys can see that I drove a lot of screws in there. A lot. This thing ain't going anywhere. So while I was finalizing the building and the recording of this stand, she was painting away all, you know, just willy nilly and all happy and cheerful. So I owe a great thankful 
thank her. Blah, 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 blah. I owe a great thank you to her. And as you guys can see, I finally put the last uh, level on top. And what that's going to do is hold the lighting system for the stand. This tank's got some more paint on it. I'm giving you guys a look around to it. And now this tank. This is what it looks like right now. It's got all black on it. I love the look. This person, oh my god, I'll put your name in the video, guy. But this person has always told me to use plastic dip on your aquarium backgrounds. Plastic dip is so good because you can peel it off. It comes off super easy, and then you can change the color. All right, YouTube, I about had it, but I have a solution. Yesterday, I went to bring the stand, and I'm off today and tomorrow. Thank God I had nine days straight of working. I'm ready to take a day off. Yesterday, I went to bring the stand in the house, ready to put a 75 on it, and it, the motherfucker wouldn't fit through the doorway, and excuse my language, but I got really, really, really mad. I mean, not every, I mean, I don't lose my temper every now and then, but this one, I kind of lost my temper a little. Um, you know, I, I scraped it on the sidewalk and everything, and I got to repaint some stuff, and, you know, the sidewalk did scrape up this wood, but there'll be a panel over it, you won't see it, so it's no big deal. But what I'm going to do to fix the problem, these right here are to combine two pieces of wood. Some people use it indoors, some people use it on joining joints. What I'm going to do is cut this son of a Mary Poppins and uh, screw it back together. Like I said, you won't see this in the end, so I'll probably cut right about here, maybe, I don't know. Probably, probably around this line right here. I'll cut right there, take some screws, put them back together, call it a day, put the 75 gallon and get on with my life. What I just did, I took my little jigsaw. And these these cuts are pretty straight, but I mean they're not they're not being perfect. I didn't eyeball it or anything. I just freehanded it. But um, they don't have to be straight. The reason I cut here is to sacrifice, you know, I I had to cut somewhere to get it in the doorway. And the reason I cut here is because this is not holding any weight. The only part this is going to hold is a future light fixture, and um, it, I, I don't I highly 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 doubt I'll have a light fixture that is so heavy that it will compromise the structural uh, security. Uh, but what I'm going to do on the next side is cut right there as well, and then bring this bad boy in the house and put it back together. Alright, I got that son of a you-know-what up here, and it looks amazing. It looks amazing. I took off the uh, <laughs> the upper deck because it was just a tight squeeze. I gave myself an extra room. This is an older 75, so it's a little longer. Um, <laughs> it was, I had probably a centimeter of play, and I had a centimeter of play on the bottom as well, but I decided, hey, let's just put this thing on the top. Let's get it over with. It's it's awesome. It's up here now guys. I'm loving it. Whew. It's time to actually put some dirt in this thing and get the platies inside before it gets cold. So I think this weekend we're supposed to get a night like in the upper 30s. The platies been in the pond, believe it or not, a couple nights with uh, uh, four, maybe high, mid 40s. But uh, I don't think they're going to survive a night of 30 degree weather. But the 75's up there. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get this thing dirted. I'm about to film a how to dirt video for you guys. 75 looks just damn good up this high. Um, it really does. I'll definitely, when I move my 125, the 125 is definitely going to sit up a lot higher. This just, it makes the tank appear so much larger and it's at perfect eye level for um, whoever walks in. Um, the only problem is, is, well, I guess I can service the tank. I can get a little step stool or something. But it's rock solid. The stand, the stand is solid. I'm excited about it, guys. If you like what's going on, definitely subscribe to my channel. I bring great content to you guys every week, similar to this video. I do, you know, everything from how tos, from salt water to fresh water to brackish water to ponds to DIY builds such as this. And a little sneak peek. I haven't really showed YouTube this much, but you definitely got to go over to the Wayne's Facebook page on Facebook.com and check out it over there. I leave all kinds of sneak peeks. This is a little sneak peek to the racking system. I got to get rid of some of these plants, guys. Hygrophyllum India Brown, probably my rarest plant. I love this plant. When underwater, it turns a pink, brown, just orange, beautiful color. It has two growth habits. It can grow in a carpeting effect or it can grow up like this. If you guys need this plant, let me know. I've got a small colony of Stargun Reppins I need to get rid of. Lindophyla Armatica with a colony, a school of Platy Fry that are, you know, probably going on almost a month old, maybe three weeks perhaps. Lindophyla Armatica, I've got to get it out of here. It's, it's growing too much in there. Um, dwarf Sag, if you guys need some Dwarf Sag, let me know. And the shrimp tanks, well, I'll let you guys see it in this video. Oh, they just came on when I touched it. 
here's a little sneak peek to the shrimp tank guys they're cycling right now I'm uh, cycling it with just some flake food I don't believe in a fish cycle I've done it in the past but if I can make it as least stressful as an inhabitant in my aquarium that's awesome comment rate subscribe guys I'll see you guys next week with another great video this is Wayne with Wayne's Fish World keep it fishy guys later